Hey everyone, my name's Alicia. And I'm Andrew. And welcome to Double A Homestead. Uh, we got everything rototilled and we are going to start getting the ground cover put down, which if you've again watched any previous videos, the ground cover is how we work two full-time jobs and we don't weed our garden. So it's an exciting day, kind of the first step towards, uh, well, outside of rototilling, of course, uh, getting the garden in. Yes. I know you can't see all of it, but you can see some of it here behind us. They are laid out in order. What we did when we pulled them up from the old place is we actually put tape on it and then we labeled them as we pulled them up exactly where they came from. So we have them laid out in order as we have them labeled so it's easier on us so we know exactly where these are going to go. As you saw in the piece of ground cover Alicia had held up. There's a note on there. Well, I, I believe I know what the note state. It, it says old start this in. So I don't know. If you're a guy and you left yourself a note, well, your future self has no clue what you were talking about, which is what happened here. I do believe that means we need to start there and roll it out, but we're going to find out. So with these ground covers, we have to unroll them. So Andrew has come up with a great idea. We are going to rock, paper, scissors to see who wins, who has to unroll this all the way down there, or who has to stand at this end. So. Yeah, she asked me, should I unroll it? Should she unroll it? So I'll rock, paper, scissors, so. Ready? There we go, yeah. yeah. Okay, I haven't done this in a long time, so. It'll be one, two, three, shoot. Okay. Right? So one, two, three, shoot. Got it. Okay, ready? Yep. One, two, three, shoot. So, okay. <laughs> One, two, three, shoot. That's one to one, we're tied. Okay. Ready? Yep. One, two, three, shoot. Oh! <laughs> I'll stand here. Okay. Go for it. Good luck. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's gonna unroll as good. You could try to kick it. Yeah, that might be, because I was thinking I could get my hands in there, but There's it's no not gonna work. There's no cardboard tube, yeah. yeah. Uh-oh. This might take a minute. Yeah. You're getting a bit off track, too. <laughs> How you doing down there? I'm fine. Oh. <laughs> It'd be nice to do uh, get this done today. You're funny. My husband has great jokes. Here we go. Yeah, that's better. So I think the top. What's needs, that? I think the top needs to go this way. And then we need to unfold it. So let me know when you're at the end. Okay. Obviously, I'll see you when you're at the end. You're not that far away, but. No. All right. All right, so pull it tight real quick. All right, this piece. So let that bottom down. Take just this piece, okay? Yeah. And then let's go this way with it. All right. Now set that down. Take this and walk back this way. You're going to have to pull pretty tight. Okay. Yep, so that makes sense. That's where the sunflowers were. That was one of the corners. Okay. So the other problem is... I believe there's a, that other sheet for the sunflower row. I don't know. Yeah, there, well, there is one. Um, so there's potential that this has to go that way, but I'm not 100%. I think it's best if we grab the new row seven and we lay that one out as well. So that'll tell us exactly where we need to start this side. Okay, what about this though, because the wind. Yeah, that's... Uh, Great question. Can you take something and set it have on that stick. corner? Well, 
Not quite. Careful what you're throwing that thing. Are you taking that one all the way down? Yeah. Well, that didn't work. All right, now let's grab the other, uh, the one by the trailer, but closest to us. Okay. These uh, sticks aren't gonna work really well, but at least it shouldn't fly into the woods. Temporary. All right, just the same thing, unroll. You ready? Are we, oh, we're, okay. Well, we got a bunch of them, so 14 to go. Well, one, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. You switched that the last second and it cost you. I thought you were gonna do rock, so nope. I went for <laughs> right on out. paper. You got 12 more tries. I can't wait. And then, are we over the rototilled spot? Or are we on it? I mean, a little bit over, just where the really? T post goes. We're over? Yeah, but it probably won't be much by the time we get it. All right. Well, uh, that's got to stay where it is then. Sweet. We're in a bit of a pickle now. <laughs> yeah. I got T posts over here. Yeah, so let's do that. If the wind will calm down. That's all down. right, I'm holding it. Yep, get the T posts if you can. I hate putting this stuff down when it's windy. Yeah, two more? Yeah. All right. Maybe we could just set this right here then get that out of our way. All right, so now we're gonna have to tighten this, get that one corner. And then we're gonna staple down this side. All right. Now that we have that whole row where we want it with the ground cover, well, we have an idea anyway. We laid out that whole row plus the expansion just to see where we are going to end up before we start stapling this down. But now that we have an idea of where we want that lined up with what we have rototilled, we're gonna start stapling that tarp down. You pull, I'll step step on it when you feel. I thought you were gonna say stopple. <laughs> stopple. All right, can you stopple it actually? Oh. Pulling. I don't know if it's too much pull or. Mm. No, not too much pull. I think it'll be okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh so now God. we need to run down this line. And yeah, staple. It is getting warm. Yep. And uh, yeah, stopple is. All right, let's stopple. I guess you hand them to me. And Let I'll me go it. grab my gloves okay. and then I'll help you. There's got to be some more holes. There's one. Might as well find the old ones. Might as well. What I've got here, these are six inch landscape staples and what we use these for not only to put the ground cover in and uh, to keep it there, we also use this as a measuring tool and this allows us to overlap each uh, ground cover six inches and what that's going to do is it's going to block out the sun completely and prevent those weeds from growing up. As Alicia had mentioned, we use those landscape staples as a measurement. It's about six inches and I'm pretty sure she covered all that. So we're gonna go ahead and start laying this landscape fabric down, uh, woven weed fabric. There's so many different words for it, ground cover, etc. I'm gonna keep going on it. She actually is gonna go uh, get dinner started because I'm lucky she cooks for me, which is very nice. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep going on that while she does some, uh, some cooking and then 
we'll see how far we can get tonight and we may have to uh, come back for it after our little uh, anniversary getaway. Well, we have laid our fourth ground cover down. That is going to be the final one for tonight. The sun is going down, so we're losing light and we're ready to get inside. We've been in the heat today, so we are pretty exhausted. Uh, didn't get as much as I would like done, but hey, we got a quite a bit done considering what we had to do. So I'm happy with the progress, but it's not over yet. We still have a quite a bit to do. Uh, as Andrew had mentioned, we are going to be celebrating our fifth anniversary. So we are going on a little vacation, but when we get back, we will resume. We are updating you guys on what's going on with the garden. As you can see that we have laid all of the ground cover down and now we are working on the fence. We only have some of the fence up, but we still have more to go. Yeah, and it's actually not quite all of the ground cover. If you watched some of our videos last year, you'll know that we did expand the garden. So this is actually going back to 2021. This is how big that garden was. So we did get that ground cover laid down. We still got to put down the extra that we expanded in 2022. Uh, so. Basically right now you're seeing the 2021 garden go up. I know we did, uh, I think it was just that one piece of ground cover that you might have seen, maybe it was two. So this is kind of a big update. Uh, it's been a little while. We had some other things going on. Uh, maybe you've seen that video, maybe you're going to. I'm not really sure which way things are gonna go. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty exciting what's happening. A lot of you are new here. Uh, you, you didn't watch our videos last year or two years ago, so we thought we'd just show you again what we're doing. If you've already seen this, well, we, uh, we, we appreciate you watching again. I do have a photo from this spot last year. Uh, the expansion's not on yet, but I'm going to go ahead and hopefully drop that photo right in here. So as you can see, the bean row, uh, there's two different rows, those are for beans, and it turns out pretty good. I just wanted you guys to be able to see what it turns into, and uh, you can see where it starts, just what it looks like with the ground cover, and then once the beans have kind of grown up, that was about, I think, a month in. And over here, we got our fencing. This is actually our trellis for our peppers. So we ended up putting, I don't remember the gap on the T-post, it's like six or eight feet. And we have four rows that we do with that. These two we've already put up. Uh, a lot of times we end up with the dog bed underneath the umbrella and that stays there. We still have to get the tomato row put up, which is over here. You can see the wind's just taking that one. This will be all tomatoes all the way down there. And as we continue, eventually, these will all turn into brassicas right here, these two rows, but we need to get this row of fencing put up. Uh, it is a little bit more difficult to do from when it's new because we have these holes that are already burned in to this ground cover, but the fencing isn't lining up exactly like it was when we first put it up. So we're having to burn the hole a little bit wider at some spots and then attach it and go from there. She's gonna get the T-post put up. I'm gonna pull this fence. We're gonna line up where we have to put the, uh, put the T-post to line up with our vertical line. And then we may have to adjust it and then we'll pound it in and get it secured. Okay, T-post is in. Attach it there. So the last one. It started off pretty rough, but it got better as we went. Yeah.
Before we start to put uh, T posts into the ground, we're just going to get them all laid out in the spots that they're supposed to go. It makes it a little bit quicker once you're actually finally doing the job itself. So we're going to get all those laid down and then try and get this fence installed. It's a little bit more difficult being it is a taller fence. We are back for another update and as you can see, we got our tomato fence in. Yep, it's a little bit of work, but it's uh, well worth it. Like I, you can see now how tall this is. So what happens is on the other side, uh, two, three feet over, that's where the electric net uh, from Premier One will go. And we run that down and this is kind of our double fence, but it also works as our trellis. So things are taking a bit longer than we want, but when you work on the off shift, like both of us do, you really can't get anything around your house done. It's, it's rough. Uh, so we're, we're learning quickly that, that uh, things are gonna take quite a while around here, especially working the shifts we do. So yeah, we'll just have to make some adjustments, whatever that might be, and uh, hopefully things will be able to speed up at some time here. Well, I'm gonna take you guys down here to the expansion part and show you what we did down there. So we are at the expansion part. This will probably forever be called the expansion part, but you can see that we still have one ground cover delay, which is fantastic. But on the other side of here, we got all of the ground cover over there down and we just got the T post laid out and then we're gonna start working on the fence.
as you saw, we got the T-post finished in this row here. We still have to put the T-post in the row over here where the sunflowers are. But what we're going to do before we do that is put the fence up on these T-posts first. Once we get that fence up on these T-posts, then we're going to put the T-posts up here and then continue with the fence. And I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. I honestly don't know how many more times I can say T-posts in this video. I know it's definitely a lot. Yep. Fantastic news, everybody. We finally got the garden almost finished. We still have a few things to do, but the biggest fence that we have in the garden is finally up. Yep, it's a 100 foot long, 50 inch welded wire, so it's a little bit much. Uh, luckily, the tractor with the pallet forks on a pallet, we were able to keep it elevated instead of having to hold it up ourselves. So made it a lot easier but like she said we're almost finished the next step is to put up the premier one poultry net uh, or actually i think it's called the permanent because it's got two spikes instead of one that's our electric netting and it's going to go around the exterior uh, on the outside of some sunflowers there and we'll have some other flowers and stuff here uh, at least that is the goal so we're going to go ahead and get started on that but this is a big moment for us because this is finally up that is one stressful thing that is now checked off the list. Absolutely. We're really excited to be able to get this done and over with. Yep. So now let's move on to the next. Behind us on the ground is our three rolls. Uh, it's so about 300 feet plus this gate here. So we highly recommend this gate. The first year we did not have the gate. Um, I bought the gate with a little bit of hesitancy for 2022 but we ended up actually really liking it it made it so much easier to get in and out uh, the electric netting might seem like it's a bit overkill uh, probably is but regardless uh, we were two years with no rabbits no anything uh, dogs won't even go on the black plastic because they get zapped uh, no deer have made it in uh, this year though this it'll be interesting because we have deer that hang out like 30 feet from the house so <laughs> You know, we might see deer that walk in between the house and the garden, and it's not a very big gap there, maybe 30 yards, I would have to guess. So I feel like this is gonna work out pretty well. We're not gonna show you putting this up just because that'd be a lot of finagling. We're running out of daylight, and I'm pretty sure some of our older videos show putting it up. Uh, if somebody does have a question and doesn't wanna go back and watch any previous ones, we could try to give you a little bit of an example. Uh, moving forward, just leave a comment and uh, if there's any other questions too, just let us know and we'll uh, try to answer them for you. So as you can see, we did get our, uh, what is it, Premier One? Yeah, Premier mm -hmm. One, it's the permanent. They make a poultry net. I believe the difference might be a single spike versus a double. I'm not 100% on that, but this is the permanent. So we did get this up. You can see here, uh, Alicia's touching the trellis. So I don't know, what is that, three feet, give or take? Yeah, I'd say so. So anyways, what we do, this is our outer fence. This is the electric netting. This keeps all the critters out. And then the deer kind of stop here and then they see this and they think, whoa, I can't make that jump. It's, uh, they, they have no idea. Their depth perception is not that great. Uh, we do have a vulnerable spot where our sunflowers are here, but so far so good. Uh, one funny story, I, the other day I was up at uh, 6.30 in the morning. I happened to look out. It was when all that smoke was coming in from the Canadian wildfires, which that's very tragic. Hopefully that clears up soon. That's way too much forest gone up in smoke. That's terrible. But what had happened was the deer came down there. So there were some deer actually right behind the camera. And then there was a couple of them. They came down here and then they ended up about halfway down. Well, I was standing there, the ground was wet. So of course, if you know anything about electric fence, you're gonna get shocked uh, with the, the ground being wet. It's gonna be way worse. So this deer puts its nose up to the electric netting. Obviously it gets shocked, but it must've been a good one. The thing jumped, had to have been this tall, like that's, I would say six, seven feet in the air. I watched it kind of roll onto its side. It fell down right directly on top. It flexed this permanent pole, basically flexed it in half. I have no idea how it didn't snap. The deer rolled into the garden, but it was in between our trellis and our electric netting. 
and I'm sitting in the window and I'm thinking, wow, that was hilarious, but also, oh, what do I do now? This deer is now trapped inside and it is one of my worst nightmares with what we set up because it's designed to keep them out, but it's also gonna keep them in. Luckily, that deer, after about a second, gathering its thoughts and um, contemplating what had just happened to him, or her, I should say, finally she got up and luckily one jump she got out of the fence she did hit it a little bit and i came out here took some photos and miraculously everything was perfectly fine but what a funny story i was hoping to get it off the security camera i'm still trying to figure it out if i manage to before we put this video out you bet it'll be in here uh, i'm hoping i find a way because it was uh it was hilarious but also scary at the same time but, yep, that's the first time in uh, three years that we've had a deer in the garden. But I don't know if I can call that a deer got in the garden. So, I don't know. You, you decide. One of the last things we had to do was get our arches in. So, last year we grew some birdhouse gourds and we tried long beans. But it ended up being that the long beans and the birdhouse gourds, it was just too much. So we're just going with the birdhouse gourds this year. We got one in that corner, one in this, and same on the other. Uh, looks like that one did not sprout. Usually we try to get these up before they sprout, but it's just been hectic around here. Life's been busy. So um, yeah, I definitely suggest getting these up before you put your seeds in. And then I also suggest you plant inside the trellis, not outside for some odd reason. I don't know where my mind was, but I planted outside the trellis. It does work out. They it, they do climb. You just got to help them a little bit. It's not a big deal. Uh, definitely suggest doing this. We want to make a tunnel where it's 12, 16, 20 feet long. We just did not have the time this year, unfortunately. Uh, but as you can kind of see, we got some things coming up. We already got this garden planted, unfortunately. It, uh, we wanted to finish up this video prior, but things got in the way and um, yeah, we had some family stuff happen. So nonetheless, if you uh, ask Alicia nicely, I bet you she's willing to show you all the plants that we've got in. And uh, yeah, so I'll leave a comment and tell her you wanna see what the garden's looking like and what she's growing this year. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in and joining us on the homestead and taking the time out of your day to watch this video. We really do appreciate it. And if you really want to help us out, like, subscribe, and share. We would really appreciate that. Yep. Thank you so much again for watching. And if any of this helped you, like she said, consider hitting that subscribe button. We got a lot more content coming this year, uh, especially around the homestead as we start from scratch. So it's going to be a lot coming out. Uh, we, we're hoping that uh, it really helps all of you out.